welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we're three episodes into Acolyte season. It's warming up, man. It's warming up. People got opinions, and when people got opinions, you need a lot of people. Talk about a lot of people. We've got, I think, the most guests we've ever had on this podcast ever. We talk about full decks. This is like the Sith list. We're talking the Sith list number of guests here. This is just absolutely crazy. But let's just go around the room very quickly and just say hi. We've got Catherine, Catherine Daphne Neen. Hello, Catherine. Crunch, crunch. Um, yeah, doing well, doing well. Oops. Lord Zencaster. A lot of people, a lot of faces here. Andy Bell, just shilling it. How you going, mate? Welcome back. Good morning, folks. Uh, good to be back. Good to be back. Ma- Missed you. Matthew Turbo Thurban, looking very good in his in his uh, Mariner's tracksuit there. Hello, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Thanks for uh, two weeks in a row. It's um, it's a rarity. Well, thanks for having me back. Oh, good. It's good to have you back. And he's, uh, people are going, where was he last week? Podcast, these reviews just aren't the same without him. Matt Mole, <laughs> back in the mix. Boo Arguel. <laughs> we get a Nabu from you. That's very inside baseball. I'm assuming everybody who listens to this podcast listens to the Sith list as well. And I hope otherwise our jokes make zero sense. I know. I think mm. Star Wars podcasting is very inside baseball enough as it is. But uh, um, yeah, so we've got the third episode of The Acolyte to go through, which straight away, talk about this show, just you don't know where it's going, what's it going to do? There was no dash title, Catherine. What happened? Well, the first two were about the twins separated and their separate paths. So they had to have, you know, the the two two words. And in the third one, they're together. And so it's just the one potential path. And this is where they split and we get, yeah, the slash. If they've got the split times. And That's it was- my... Destiny, wasn't it? Cockamamie, speculating. And there is no opposite of destiny, is there? Destiny? There is. No (laughs) serendipity. (laughs) Um, Before we go any further, actually, we'll just quickly, because obviously Catherine and Turbo, you were here last week. Uh, Andy and Mole, you were not here last week. How you before, before just on the last two episodes and going in? How how you feeling coming into this one, Andy? You can kick us off. Was it? I'm loving it. Feeling good? Yes. I mean, I'm. Yeah, no, it's, um, I think it's, it's really interesting. And it's, um, <clears throat> I mean, I said it, I talked a little bit about it with Sean last week. And um, I love the fact that the story is, is first, it's paramount. And it just so happens to be in the Star Wars universe. And it's the same kind of creating or logic that I saw with, uh, with Andor as well. So um, my wife is into it as well, which is normally a benchmark to good storytelling. So mm. yeah, all good. Thumbs up from Mrs. B. And what about you, Matt? Did you manage to watch it not on your phone? while driving um as is your way normally you know across no the no Bridge no or I, i've been pretty good i, I finally I, I watched the first episode and i thought it was very good i enjoyed it um and then episode two was a bit of a weird one for me as i had my my boss's farewell and i had a big night out so i came back about 9 p.m many drinks in and started watching with the missus and i fell asleep <laughs> not, due to, not due to the the story just just due to the drinks and so we lived in this weird universe where my wife had seen more Star Wars than I have. And so <laughs> she's just, so she knew all yeah. about Kel Naka and, and I had no idea. She's like, Bookie Jedi. Did she spoil it for you? No, she didn't. She, 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 <laughs> no spoilers. She, no spoilers. But I, I, I did catch up. And I didn't catch up until like the weekend. So I was, I was, I was very slow on the, on the uptake on that. But it's good. It's, 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 it's different. It's, uh, it's fresh. And it's original, like um, and it's just it's set in the universe. I mean, I I, I like um, I like I, I like reading about all, all these things. How um, I don't know the soul. How he, I don't know the, the actor's name, but how he learnt English for the role. And Qui Gon is his sort of uh, is his um, spirit Jedi sort of um, you know, that was yeah. his favorite Jedi. And um, he he sounds a bit like Bay's Malbus. Uh, when he talks. Well, it's obviously the uh, someone English not as a first accent kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and if you're going to have sort of broken 
accents or, you know, thick Asian accents. It's good that they're actually coming from Asian actors and not Neumordians for a change as well. So, you know. <laughs> the the, the were done tastefully this time. So They uh, were done tastefully this time. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been interesting because it's sort of come out and the usual discourse. Well, actually, to be honest, the discourse has been awful and it's been worse than ever and I feel terrible for people who've had to deal with it. Um, but I think it's also sort of shone a light on, you know, how, how some people feel about things. But at the same time, it's gotten a really great response. People are digging it. Uh, the viewer numbers are good. Um, I think it'll stand the test of time. And it was funny coming into this that I didn't read any spoilers, but there were people who had seen it going, like, oh, this this third episode's going to, you know, make some people pretty, oh, they're going to have some issues with it. Oh, we don't know, we don't know. But um, I don't know. We'll get into it. Um what were you thinking, Turbo? Were you thinking flashback this week? Did you have an inkling we were going to get we'll get this mis- this part of the mystery resolved this early, or did we? I thought it was going to go with Cal Naka, as of like last week, abruptly ended in on that Wookiee planet or, or hideout. Mm. Um, it's actually I didn't doubly think weird. We get a flashback. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think we get a flashback till episode four, to be honest. But it was a welcome surprise when I saw the episode title and the description. Um, did you read it before? Pretty interesting that it was a full flashback episode as well. Yeah, so. I was kind of waiting. I, I kind of was waiting for the intercutting and it didn't come. Mm-hmm. And then once we kind of, I went, oh, no, we're, we're with this. <laughs> we're kind of in it. <laughs> well, they sort of needed a flashback because, you know, for Torben or King Tom and whatever you want to call him, um, to just sort of just drink the poison, there's, you know, that you need to get a little bit of context about that. So, And we still don't have it, but, I mean, we, we have half of it. Now. Well, it kind of sort of shows that there's it's given you a bit because we talked about this last week, Catherine, about um, kind of setting stuff up but resolving it quite quickly and moving the story forward. And this kind of feels like one of those things where it's like, oh, maybe this would have been episode seven before we found out what went down. And we haven't found everything, but it's kind of given us a pretty good idea of what sort of set the tone. Is that what you reckon? Yeah, um, it's definitely giving us um, a p- point of view. So it's put some of the jigsaw in place, but I definitely think we'll see another um, side of these events, but it's definitely raised some interesting questions. Um, And yeah, so as we all know, know, Luke has got inspiration from Rashomon. So I think that's definitely the inspiration here also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, great to see where it goes but uh nothing for yord horde this week no nothing no nothing for the yord horde nothing for the uh the pit pack nothing for the jackie what are the andy no any idea what the jackie fans are called <laughs> no yeah, they've got names that i think it's all encompassing they call themselves the jackie the jackie um, yeah the. <laughs> the the um no so it was a total sort of it was all just back in the past. Um, do does anybody know if the two girls playing main Osha were twins or was it one girl or do we? Was it a? Here we go. Matt's got his phone. Out. Matt, no, it's twins. It is it's twins. Definitely twins. twins. Come back because they showed up to the premiere as well. Oh, did they? Okay, okay. And it was kind of spoiled spoiled for me because of the <laughs> saw the twins there, and I'm like, hang on. Well, it could be like a <laughs> you know, like a Mary Lindsay, Kate Lindsay, Nashley. Lindsay, yeah, Lindsay, like an also Lindsay, twins. Lindsay Lohan, uh, Freaky Friday sort of thing as well. Like, because I mean, <laughs> the actress playing in the present is that she's just doing the two roles. Yeah, yeah, but. Mm-hmm. The two girls now, because there's there's subtle differences in like the nose and sort of the facial, yeah. Um, but I'm just, I, I'm looking at it at the same time, going, is that just the computer? Are they sort of just changing it? But they look very similar. Did you think, uh, Andy, that they youngified Soul Master Soul, or was it just a bit of dodgy haircut going on? I think. Um, Both. I mean, there is a rhyme, there is a rhyme about you know the Asian complexion anyway, isn't there? I mean, they're they're, extra, they're extraordinarily blessed with with really really good skin. So, um, um, I, I I don't think they needed to. Um, he's a good looking guy. Um, and I um, think you changed that haircut. Um, <laughs> the long hair definitely yeah, does. They, 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 they gave him a bit of a Beatles mop cut, didn't yeah, they? For, they gave him the pumpkin pie, the, um, the Lloyd Christmas. Yeah, they yeah, gave yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I think it was a little bit more too than that. But um, 
No, I, I don't think they needed to do a lot of work on him. And, and the same for Carrie Ann Moss as well. I mean, what, what was clearly apparent was, um, was Torbin was, uh, uh, with a beard gone, it was, uh, they didn't have to do a lot of work there. They just ripped the beard off and, uh, and gave, and gave him back his own hair again. Um, yeah. Yeah. And give him a pat on the right? as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I, I didn't see young. that. He, he, had a, he had a pad on yeah, braid. Yeah, yeah, he did have yeah. a pad on braid. I noticed that. Oh, wow. And he kind of had the curly mullet look, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah his, his hair yeah. went very wispy as he got older, though, didn't it? Not only did it all start to sort of, yeah. you know, fall out as it happens to, to all of us. Ha- happens to some of us, Josh. <laughs> happens to some of us. <laughs> um, well, I just saw <laughs> completely <laughs> unrelated. Don't impress it. Completely unrelated. I just saw the, the photo, set photos of Daniel Craig in the new Knives Out, and he's he's gone the longer hair. And I was thinking about cutting mm. my hair because it's getting a bit long and gray. And I'm like, oh, maybe maybe I'll just hang it around a little bit longer and I can rock. David Daniel Craig will bring it back. So maybe there's time still but um so just going back to the start we'll kind of go through the episode as much as we can i mean a lot happened in this obviously we're back on the we've gone back 16 years we're basically getting the backstory of what happened or kind of what happened on this planet before main osha uh was separated and split up um and we sort of just start with is it may at the, at the sort of the tree the the, the sacred tree torturing the animals <laughs> No, no, Osha is the one who's there first oh, and yeah. May comes to find her because, yeah, it's sort of said later on Osha's always running all, away. Yeah, um, she wants exploring to Exploring and learning about things and, um, yeah. and May. So it was, the, it was the Bunta tree, right, which yeah. was the poison. Mm. I, 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 when I first saw it, I thought it was the those mushrooms. There were those blue mushrooms on the tree. I thought they might have been the poison, but I think the actual yellow tree is the Punta tree, right? Yep. Is that, I, I think it's the right? bark, yeah. yeah. I was getting something. Oh, Ma- major yeah. Avatar vibe sort of thing, tree of life. <clears throat> so my, my eyes went straight to the mushrooms, but maybe that's not <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> Just like, ooh, dun, 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 dun. Um, <laughs> is they Is it, are they going a little heavy handed that, that May is just a bad kid, that she's sort of, you know, kind of mean to animals and, and sort of, Got Ooh. that streak, got that dog in her, as, as Hawes would say, um, or is it all a little bit of a misdirect? I think it's a bit of a, well, I don't know what anyone else thinks, but I think I think this whole flashback is from Osha's perspective or Osha's perspective. Mm. So you see that you don't see the full story, but you also see from her perspective what her sister's like and what her view of her sister is. Yeah. So I kind of think everything's a little bit exaggerated on that side. I had a thought. Because I don't think, obviously, May is, like, just a naughty kid or truly evil at this stage. I got some um, real, like, as someone who's got daughters, and <laughs> I'm just kind of like, I'm getting some really sort of vibes of the, you know, arguments and stuff. I mean, we don't have sort of have as much life and death at our house, but as far as just like, eh, stop that, don't stand there. And it was quite cute that that was sort yeah. of, when they got told to sort of stand there, oh, one was like nudging the other yeah. one. I'm just going, hmm, you know, this, this, this ring is a little bit true here. Uh, <laughs> Um, on, the other, on the other side, on the, on the other hand, though, you also saw some really good qualities from May as well, in that she's so devoted to her family. You know, she's devoted to the sister. You know, I, I, do I call it a sisterhood to the, to the coven? Mm. Um, you saw an awful lot of loyalty there, whereas um, perhaps Osha was a little bit more um, independent, didn't really put you know put herself before others, um, perhaps. So I think that there's an awful lot of um, duality in in both of their in both of their um demeanors as you know not just i i don't see i don't see may as being particularly dark i think she's a i think she's a little bugger at the age that she's at mm. at this moment in time she's pretty eight but what come <laughs> what ca- what came through exactly what came through was this amazing devotion towards her mother's um and and the coven and, look her very, sister, and her sister because you and know in the in that sort of uh test or um training sequence it was May who sort of stood in front to protect Osha and Osha you know, went behind May mm. um, to hide. So it was May protecting Osha in that moment. So who are these people, Mole? Uh, they're not the Night Sisters, but they're not far off. What, 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 you know, you're the man with the law. What, do you know, got any idea of who these people might be? Are they just I, a break-offs? I, I don't think they, they have been established. I, I'm, I'll have to refer to Jimmy Heap. Hebert for some more info, but I'm I'm pretty sure there's a new new force or thread users in the galaxy. Um, May the turbo, thread be with you. I think they just, they just interpret the force a different way. 
I mean, they said, you know, they were they were van vanquished or from their section of the galaxy because they were considered dangerous and dark. Um, and then it gets interesting because yeah, she said they, she said they were exiled. Exiled. Hey Matt, and do you know where your mic is, by the way? Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> and then they've decided to make it really interesting by creating life, and you know they've got twins, and one's you know so semi good, and one's bad, and it it all creates for this you know recipe for some good TV st storytelling. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and this seems to be the the, the thing that I, I think when it was alluded to that people would get mad that somehow it was disrespectful to Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one, that he could be the only one who could be created by, by life, by the force and whatever else. But uh, I mean, for one, it's kind of kept pretty vague. They kind of say that they've created it, um, but the other lady actually carried the children, even though um, I forgot the name of the, their mother. Direct mother mother Coral. Mother Coral, Coral said that she created them. But what does that actually mean? We don't know. And... You got to Coral also said, um, I think she said, what happens when the Jedi discover how, how you created, how, how she was created, mm -hmm. or they were created. Which makes me feel like that they probably already so got a pretty good inkling. I don't think it's just about some kids being trained. Like they, it, I don't know. It just felt like they. I mean, they're effectively spying on them, right? Yeah. So they, <laughs> but if they've they got word know. from somewhere, or they, they're obviously a, an organization that they know about and maybe they thought they had been taken care of and were up to no good, but. Are they up to no good, Catherine? What? What should they just be laid left, left, left? Well, be? this is where I regret not having read Phase Two of the High Republic because in that phase, uh, that's when, from the little bits I've I've read or, or heard on Star Wars Explained, uh, there's sections of Force users or at least. Um, groups of communities who don't believe the force should be used in the way that the Jedi are using it. Um, and so they, I think they, do they wage a war against the Jedi or they're at least very hostile to the Jedi. Mm -hmm. So that's, so I'm sort of going, Oh, could be related to that. Could be related to that. Like an offshoot of that. Definitely. Um, dark sister vibes, if not exactly them. Yep obviously calling themselves witches, uh, using the force but in a very different way, you know, like in a visible way, like the way we see our Night Sister magic, Like whereas with Night Sister magic it tends to be green. Their threads were, were blue and I'm almost reminded of in that, was it Tales of the... Um, empire that we saw a few weeks ago the um oh the other ladies up the ladies up the hill yeah yeah the ladies up the hill yeah using it in i'm just sort of they had more blue oh, the mountain clan were they the, yeah the mountain the, the, clan the rock ladies yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah. but what you know sort of struck me of it was like okay the jedi coming i'm like you're training children you know like Dudes, you train children. Dudes, yeah. you take children. You take children very young. Yeah. Like that's your whole modus operandi. Well, that was the I, thing. They said that they had no children and maybe that was the whole thing is that they don't normally have children and they've got wind that they've, they've done something. I don't know. Is it is it sacrilege to – I'm talking about sacrilege in the context of the show. Is it sacrilege in Star Wars lore to have – other life created? I think it's quite fascinating because the whole thing about Anakin Skywalker was that apparently, you know, it happened. Shmi didn't know that it, how it happened. It just kind of she woke up one day and there it was. This seems like it's been very carefully planned out and thought of and done on purpose, which I think straight away makes it more interesting that they've actually yeah. got a technique and they've done well, it. Well, but we don't. I mean, if every, that's even I mean, what they did. I, I, I've, I've been very lucky in that I've only – it's still morning t my time and so i've only just watched it so i've stayed away from social media so i haven't seen any of the discord that you're talking about um but ultimately we don't we, we may well be jumping to conclusions as usual in that we don't actually know what's going on i mean the first thing i i wrote down for myself was you know are they are they another iteration of the chosen one there's nothing to say that the chosen one isn't something that just repeats itself every couple of millennia or every or every hundred year or so mm -hmm. it'd be quite interesting <laughs> to quote, if this is what wheel of been... time the dragon reborn like 
over and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Well, Neo I was, in I was the thinking about the Matrix. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was thinking about the Matrix. It's happened in the past. It's happened, it happened, it'll happen again. Or, um, or whether it's something as simple as, you know, these are women. Um, um, they are women that, that live together and, and convene together it's and a have a society Park, together. And it may well just be a case of having, you know, of, of, of surrogacy. It may well be a case of where she says, I, I created them. Then she may well have had her partner carry the child for her. Yep. You don't, we don't know yet. I mean, that's the point. We just don't know yet. And there's no point jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Either way, it's not the it's kind of show to, fascinating. It's not the kind of show to out. jump to conclusions with, is it really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's looking very silly. <laughs> Space IVF clinic and uh, just inserted. Yes, you yeah. don't know exactly. Yeah, you know she could have just gone. Yeah, I just I you know I had a great weekend in Corillia and came back and and uh, you know took care of business and then got someone else to carry it. Got the, got my partner to carry it. Um, and in the shed at the back, they've got the two Uber droids. You know, Uber, yeah. Uber, Uber. Uber. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just watched Revenge of the Sith know. on uh, on Sunday. My girls watched Revenge of the Sith for the first time. And, you know, it's a pretty intense movie in places, especially if you're five when you're eight. And definitely there were a few moments where the girls are like, Ooh, and, I, you know, I said to Sloane, who's five, I'm like, do you, you know, do you want me to turn off? Do you want me to go? And she's like, no, I want to see her have her babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with this. But um, they both got through it. I know we, we've digressed, but they both got through it and they both really enjoyed it. And we went straight on to Obi-Wan because um, they wanted to see what happened. And... Um, they they had two takeaways from Obi Wan. One they put on Twitter was that at the end of the first episode, when Obi Wan decides to go help, Sloan goes, "Wow, he's going to skip. He's going to skip work for this." <laughs> Basically, <laughs> and um, Olive was just like, "There is no way that girl is ten years old." Talking about little Leia, she's like, "I'm bigger than her, and I'm yeah. only eight. And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure she was. Yeah. They were casting young so they could put her in something else later on." But um, these girls, May and Osha, look spot on for eight. They behave like eight-year-olds. I mm. think they're they're really good. Did you see that they revealed their full names? <laughs> Did you watch it with subtitles? Oh yeah, they, yeah. I didn't watch it with subtitles, but it was, they were like it was Mayho Anasaya and Verosha. Yeah. Anisaya. Oh. And yeah, that's interesting. I only noticed second time round on the subtitles. Do yep. you go Actually, subtitles first time as well, or just second time? Is that no? So, uh, subtitles only second. Yeah. Yep. Oh man. You've done good research there, and um, yeah, so they were basically like the girls are getting ready to do their ascension, uh, which is sort of I don't know, be, be, pledging themselves to the to the to the pack, to the group, um, to the coven, as you'd say. And uh, the interesting was, and I'm sure you all saw it, and I actually spotted it before it became really apparent, was the two planets in the sky, that were the little yeah, red yeah, one yeah, and the yeah. little blue one that um, show up in the logo, which I thought was a nice little touch. Um, I did the, the, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio thing. <laughs> Can we talk about the fact that they're just like hanging out near, near what looks to be a volcano? It's a cool location. Like the, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I don't quite understand the um, the volcanic thing where they're, the, the structure inside where they're trying to, I don't know, um, do something with a volcano or trying to suppress it. Is mm. that what it is or am I going crazy? Probably um, geothermal, like get the power from the steam volcano yeah. from the steam. Oh, was all the things that were all the machines and things that were in there. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, I just said a guess. Yeah. I hadn't noticed that it was like a volcano, but that would be. It my looks sort exactly of guess. like a volcano. I remember um, there was this oh, sidetrack here. There's a there's a there's some islands off Italy called the Aeolian Islands, <clears> and there's literally one of the islands is called Vol- Volcano. And it literally is just a volcano with a village on one side and a volcano sort of just rolling off lava into the ocean or into the sea. And that's the first thing. Well, I hopefully that lava just, just, you know, the lava, that lava will only ever go on that side. I had nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a lopsided volcano with the lava going one way. But, um, yeah, sorry for the side. No, no. So, Mole, what's going mm. on in this ritual, mate? What are they What are they doing there? What's the so ascension all about? The ascension, from what I believe, is well, they're obviously – pledging themselves to the coven and each daughter is i mean she said when i die you'll take over my place in the coven and and there's that there's that's the reason why may has the the sun tattoo or whatever the the whatever the yeah. symbol on her face is that she has that and osha doesn't because the jedi intervened at that just at that very moment but i'm guessing that as part of this ascension she sort of 
I didn't one, notice two, that. Well, I guess three, so sky and then blocking it, wasn't it? Blo- then it comes down. So it was the marking and that ascension was, you know, your acceptance into the coven and you could just sense Osha's so wasn't she wasn't keen she wasn't keen at all um and then she got she got offered a way out like literally five minutes afterwards you know she's kind of going and then the jedi turn up Mm. and i mean and you could just see soul gravitating towards osha from the beginning like literally like very very strong the connection it's Um, really curious about are they just what are they up to do they just did they just gotten word that these people who are sort of using the force in a way they don't like have got children there? Um, maybe before they're like, oh, well, just let them do their thing because whatever. There's there's no kids. Eventually they'll die out and then they start training children. Or is it we've heard that they've specifically, you know, done something to bring these children in using the force and our intent yeah. is to take them away, or what? I don't know. What are the, what? Maybe? Not sure, but did you like? They're obviously really spying on them. And did you see? I think it was Sol said that mentioned about the mark. The mark wasn't there this morning. Yeah. So they they really are like on like spying on the whole thing. So they must have had like a mission for the last couple of weeks, just spying on the on the coven. Yeah, because we sort of we spoke about last week I about like have they been stationed there for a long time? Are they just the local Jedi? But they're they're specifically there. I think there's still more to be told in the past, or even if even if it's only explained through, you know, th- through the through an explanation in the, in the present. But I still think, I mean, I won't. I don't want to skip ahead, but but you know, the way it ended, there were still more questions than there were answers. Mm. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah. So I think I think there's an awful lot still. You know, why are they there? And while we know the outcome for Osha and May of this episode. There's a bunch of questions that came from, you know, what actually happened. Yeah. Because um, yeah. the whole bit about anyway, Torben is I'm missing sure as well, and what actually happened. Oh, there, um, there is, like, like yeah. I said, the I, after watching it the second time, I like I said before, I, I do think it. This whole flashback was from Osha's perspective, and there's so many mm. gaps, as you, as you said, Andy. That um, I, I kind of think there won't be another full flashback episode, but I think it will all be revealed in multiple kind of just at cr- the crucial into, moments in, you know now you kind of know yeah. how it plays out where all the pieces are well Catherine, they um they like they straight away they were like we're going to test these kids like there wasn't even sort of like they weren't even like oh no they're too old they you know we why bother blah 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 like they seemed like they were particularly here to get them like you know yeah. they wanted to test them both what would you think of all that it was nice to have the little the little screen back the little you know <laughs> <laughs> was it cheap a cup. cup, a cup, a speeder, <laughs> a loft cat, a speeder. Yep. Um, Cold, sir. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely like a not asking permission to test your child. It's a we're going to test them. Um, you know, to just see whether or not they've got any force abilities because you know if they have force abilities, they're ours. It's, but it sounded like it was Not more right. of a like they already kind of knew that was the end game. Like it wasn't as if like, oh, yeah. well, we'll just test them since we're already here. It seemed like we've come specifically to test the kids to find out what's going on here and we will. But like the the, th- the thing was that, you know, they tested them both and there was that whole thing about like you, you just don't tell them the truth. Um, do you think Osha just lied and they were just like, well, you're lying and you want to lie so we're not going to bother or – we just want one of you. Sorry, May, you know, because May kind of went through and they didn't say anything about her, but she obviously lied, but they can tell when they're lying. So were they just focused on getting one and not the other or was it always about splitting them up? No, I think they would have taken both. Um, Mm. But they could sense that, yeah, May was wanting to lie and or May was wanting to stay. They could sense Osha wanting to go or at least in conflict about it all. So they would have taken both. I think that's the Jedi way in that they would have taken both to prevent them being trained as witches. But is that too much attachment to take both though? Because then they've got each other to be attached to. Is it kind of like, well, we actually can only take one because if we take them both. Um, In the High Republic uh, uh, comics, there's twins. Okay. I mean, they, they, they said, obviously, in episode one that obviously there was grave concerns about 
her taking on the Jedi training because of what happened and the incidents. Like, obviously, if she just left, you know, peacefully without all the death and destruction, there wouldn't have been all that attachment issues. But um, given everything that's gone on, um, it's obviously caused major, major, major issues with the training and, and, and the breaking away and the breakdown in the relationship and obviously her leaving the Jedi Order as well. So it's, it, I'm looking forward to seeing what actually happened there. But, I mean, it's good to know. I mean, it's interesting how either either sister didn't know how they were both alive. <laughs> what what part did the Jedi sort of play in the the death of all the – in all the death there because they're all just lying there. I mean, they're all just lying there. Exactly. And everyone else is okay. There. So it's not like they all died of a well, yeah, smoke that's inhalation. That's the point. We're only getting drip fed. And why is Mace like so pissed is, off? Is... Because it's all her fault if we look at it from this sort of perspective. Uh, and and that's exactly what I was alluding to when we said there's still there's still some more to I mean, there's no way they died in the fire. Absolutely no way they died in the fire. And there's absolutely no way that May well, I don't believe there's any way that May would have killed them. So something else happened, and that's the bit that I think that the the to Turbo's earlier point, you know, they've been spying on them for a while, and then the fire goes off, and then everyone's dead. This is this is the whole crux, I believe, of the of the the story. You know, the story. I mean, the other thing that I wrote, I, I thought of as well is that Sol turns up as soon as the fire is going now in theory if this if their ship is some distance from the from where the coven is based and the fire starts instantaneously with may setting the book on fire and yet within two three minutes he's there ready to rescue the girls something is afoot can i something is can afoot. i throw a theory at I you i don't believe in um that i've just on. thought of just then um this isn't i'm ready anything <laughs> but uh do you think maybe Torben poisoned them all and that's why he drank that poison without any question and they're all just poisoned? He's poisoned them. That's why they're all dead. There's no lightsaber marks. There's no nothing. They've got a big poison tree out the back. She turns up. She's like, I know what you did. Here it is. Suck oh, down that poison, Wasn't that buddy. original yeah. poison in the other episode, Bunta poison yeah. as well? So she brought him yeah, up, worked him up poison. and said, it's Bunta. Yeah. I know what you uh, You know, you're here. Here's the poison. You've been living with it. You got sent out to poison them, whether you did it on purpose or not. Maybe you're supposed to put them to sleep and you stuffed up. You gave them too much or something. But, yeah. I mean, that's the big gap. Ooh, I like we that. just don't know. Give me a job, Leslie. We Hedlund. don't know I figured you out. Chapman <laughs> on the cold case. Well done. Um, well, the funny thing is about Torben, this isn't my – I didn't actually um, – spot this but i did see this online someone took a screen grab that there's a shot at the very end where osha's on the ship and they kind of wake her up and in the background you can see torben and his eye is all like he's he's got a fresh wound on his eye so he's gotten oh. he's gotten that from That's whatever snake, went right? down so whatever went down cost him his eye um so somebody <laughs> doesn't know don't know who it is but uh but what could what could the, what could I mean again? It, 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 we go back to earlier comments of they have been banished or they have been put they have been driven to exile for, because of from their from their home world or their home system. So because they were perceived as being bad, what would have driven the Jedi to have done this? A to have been spying on them in the first place, and then B to have done that. There's something very elusive here. Well, mm, one it. one thing about these Jedi is is they're very political. Like you know, Master Indara is dead, and then I can't remember what her name Venestra. is. Venestra. Venestra, and they're like, you know, our political allies could use this against us. We must act swiftly. So they make a decision about that and and how it could be strategized against them. So they're very very political. Worried about playing, their rep, playing the game. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we talked and about um. So, uh, someone on Twitter was tweeting about sort of the, you know, the weapon cannot kill the Jedi and da-da-da-da-da. And it was sort of like, you know, the idea is that is to kill the Jedi reputation, basically, or their standing in the galaxy. So something like a scandal like this where they off the, you know, rather than force users or whatever else, you know, scandal could kill the reputation of the Jedi 
Um, yeah. Which eventually what kind of does because people start becoming less and less trusted mm. of them. And, well, that's kind of killing the dream, right? Killing the yeah whole, of the ideal yeah. of what they are. And this show sort of preludes the the ultimate downfall of them, um, like we've spoken about. But um, yeah, so, so they do they test OSHA, they test May and OSHA. They seem to want to take OSHA, to take OSHA with them, which again sort of goes, all right. Well, are they here specifically for them both? They're happily to take one. Is one enough? Are they going to – is the plan all along just to take one and then get rid of the rest and get rid of the troublemakers behind her back and say, well, you're never going to see them again. It won't matter. Um, look, I have a feeling, you know, does the fire put a monkey wrench in their operation where they plan to just take her and then never know you, about it or is it somebody go else or well, who knows? I don't think the Jedi would have taken May against her will. Like I, I know the Jedi are a bit dodgy, uh, but I think the fact that Osha wanted to go – I believe they would have just taken her. Mm. I don't know. I I just can't imagine Jedi sort of ripping their children away. It sort of has to be agreed, you know, by the parent at least. Oh, there's there's, there's a volunteer, you know, there's a buy-in. I mean, remember, even when Qui-Gon said to Anakin, like, you know, they said he said, you know, being a Jedi is not an easy thing and even if you succeed, it's a hard life, you know. He, and he accepted it, like, um, and even if he would, leave his mother never see her again so it's not like they just snatch them and say but they they do i they have they a way of identifying don't they they identify four sensitive kids and you know <clears throat> build on the jedi cult i guess um <laughs> i guess a different i guess the difference is though is that um the witches just want to be left alone. Then they don't seem to be any threat at all. They're they're a, they're a, they're a, they're a tight knit community, and they don't want to. They just want to be left alone. Whereas um, in Anakin's situation, he was a slave, hmm. um, and so as a as a viewer, as a spectator in the theatre, it didn't feel so bad with Qui Gon taking him away to a better um, life a better life, you know, to be, to, to be, to train as a Jedi, because it was certainly better than what he was used to. Whereas, um, this is a little bit more ambiguous in my mind, because it's, um, they, she was part of a loving family despite, you know, I mean, everyone, everyone dreams when they're eight years old of being something bigger and better and faster and stronger. But, um, yeah, it's, it, it's a weird one for me. It almost feels like, it almost feels like the, the Jedi, are. I don't know. I don't know about your experiences at, at school, though. But I, I had. Um, I mean, I went to a state school, but I got plenty of friends of mine now that were shipped off to boarding school when they were quite young. And quite frankly, it was quite a damaging experience for quite a few of them, actually. And it just feels like the same thing with the Jedi, really. But anyway, yeah, my I um, I had some good... bit like Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Catherine, does the notebook notebook have any significance? What she's scribbling in there, or anything like that? Do you reckon, or is it just a thing to set on fire? We see that symbol quite a bit. Like we get a bit of focus on that. So you sort of feel like that will come back, you know, could be nothing. But, it, it you know, it's not like we, we're, we're flicking through. We're not really seeing anything. We're seeing that one symbol each time we cut to the notebook. So you sort of think, well, that may have some significance. Yeah, but it's definitely important to Osha for that's what May is using to start the fire. And, you know, yes, she started a fire and it was at the door, but there was also, like, explosions. It seemed to spread very quickly. So something's... For a stone building <laughs> as well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah, look, something's up. Something stinks. Um I don't know. Is it if it if it turns out that the Jedi just went in there and wiped him out? Does, does how does that sit with everybody? Is it better to have one kind of one that went nuts, one bad apple that kind of ruins it and they cover it up, or is it more like it something happened and it kind of got out of hand and escalated and it just sort of everything kind of it was a series of bad things that just kind of piled on top of each other. Well, I my, can't my, imagine. Mama's, oh, sorry. I was gonna say I can't Go imagine on, any rogue, on, rogue Jedi. Jedi at all so i think it's a, it's going to be like a comedy of errors or misunderstanding so or put, the, put in a bucket and, whoa, goes yeah, around just, and then yeah. <laughs> tensions tensions were already high tensions were already high i mean um the mother the other mother the 
the one with the horns. The mother I can't remember mother. what she was called. Zabrak. Oh. Coral face. Yeah, coral. Her, coral. Her, she was um she was already quite tetchy when they when they interrupted the ceremony, the ascension. She was already quite tetchy and ready to kick off anyway. I mean mm. they she was quite happy to to start use, using her, uh, her 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 spear or whatever it was. Um and I guess that if Torben is as junior as we suspect he is, he would probably be quick to um, react in a in a in a tense situation. So I I kind of reckon what we didn't see was a bit of a standoff that that just exploded and went completely the wrong way, and everyone started mowing each other down. And he I could was- be wrong. And he was possessed um, or taken control of or something happened to him when they, in that first Mm. sort of confrontation. Mm. And they use him to go a bit nuts as an excuse to kill them all. So, you know, she controls him. So he pulls a lightsaber out, has a swing and they're all like, you know, and they're like, oh, he's coming at us. Let's, you know, and then it all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. It's it's just yeah. it's gonna be it's just gonna be one of those things where you're gonna cut back and go like oh man this is just bad <laughs> it's just going bad bad it's um... so so can we can we talk about Cal Naka and his speeder bike I I would love to see I know Andy's a big fan of the walkie Cal Naka with his speeder bike I want I want to see him ride that thing I want to see him ride that thing just like kick did it the deer and did it it was awesome seeing him and he looked he looked he looked he looked amazing but really weird <laughs> i've yeah, never weird seen him with all clothes, the clothes. <laughs> it's weird to, it's weird to, but he's also got the the kind of mohawk thing going on as well and he, he, he i've got a few things that reminded me I, I got i got major vibes all the way through it and when i saw kalnaka i just kept thinking of less chewbacca more harry and the hendersons yep i don't know if you, you yeah, felt yeah. the same thing because yeah. he was so he's so slight in frame because all his clothing's bringing him back in but the other vibes I got as well was I don't know I don't know if, during the ascension ceremony itself, when the sisters are all together, I got some major Bene Gesserit vibes. I thought very much it, it, it felt like June, the tone, yeah, yeah. the atmosphere, the lighting, um, that 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 felt um, yeah, like I said, very June like. But also earlier on in the show, when in in the episode when they were when they were a community and teaching uh, the children. Uh, and each other as to what to do. I got major um, Avatar, Airbender, last Airbender vibes as well, where almost like with the, um, you know, a, a local community that is learning to maintain their um, their history, their, their 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 legend, their their abilities. And I got major vibes from that. All in all, I thought it was a really, really well put together and a beautifully shot um, episode. So... With but the, yeah, um, Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> Harry yeah. Now, we, back, back to the sort of ceremony, um, I think they were doing that chant. It was almost like they turned into a song. I, was, I felt like they were going to go into a music. Well, I wasn't sure like, if it was them off. singing it or if it was just the it soundtrack was, it, it or it was, was a bit of both. One it, power, it two power, into the one three. Other. Yeah, power of one, power of many, I think. Uh, power was, of one, power yeah. of two, power it, of many. It, you know, it started always says it's the power autogenic of one. and then became soundtrack, I think. Uh, yeah, I and that's it, it felt like I was... I mean, I haven't even seen Frozen, but it sounded like it, it was going to break off into it, like Let it go. a Star Wars I know musical. Frozen pretty Do. well. <laughs> Do. Do. <laughs> go watch Frozen. <laughs> yeah. It's very, it's very, very good. good. Film, especially if you haven't seen it a hundred times. Um, so eventually it all goes down. The, the place catches fire. Everybody seemingly dies. The girls get stuck on opposite. So Ocean manages to get out of her room. They get opposite, stuck on opposite ends of a gang gantry, which apparently had handrails on it. Um, somebody pointed that <laughs> yes. out, which is very, uh, you know, they've learned their lessons. And um, May sort of falls into the crevice. crevice. Um, and Osha falls as well, but then Master Soul manages to, well, he's not Master Soul, I think he's just Jedi Knight Soul, manages to grab her and um, take her back to the ship and, and ship her off to Coruscant. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where we leave it. Oh, we oh, sort of. We, oh, she goes back to the poison tree after that, doesn't she? And that's kind of how it kind of ends. Is that May? May does. Sorry, I'm going to keep getting them mixed up. Um, so yeah, that's where we kind of leave it. And uh, I don't know where do we go from here. Do we? I assume we'll go back into the well present day in inverted commas next week. Mel, what do you what do you reckon? Are we going to 
pick up the investigation? Yeah, I think, um, well, we've got to revisit um, May, in the, May in the present day, chasing down Cal Naka. Um, but I think I think we'll get a mini flashback as as to why Torben, what happened with Torben, and how he lo- lost his eye, and why they can't just they can't just sort of just give us the tree, give us the poison, and sort of just expect us to connect the dots and and just assume they'll they yeah. There has, well, there has what to be a little five bit- episodes left, so I feel like it'll at some point we'll revisit. It might not be till the end, but close to the end we'll we'll go back we'll go back to that event and and find out whether it's you know may's point of view what she saw um or is it just what happened and she saw the things that i she didn't see you know what actually happened from the other side i guess we'll i don't know i don't know turbo are we gonna are we just gonna pick up the investigation are we getting we back on the yord horde next week no, I want I want a Kalnaka episode. I want to see inside his little, little house. <laughs> you want to cut some laps on his bike or something? Yeah, see his hanging out collection. Fresh, hanging out with Yoda. I want to see that. Yeah, get, getting some fresh meat. You know, <laughs> <laughs> ripping an arm out of the socket. That sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a question. How do you how do you offer Wookie? That's the thing. I don't know. Any ideas, Andy? What do you what do you reckon? How do you offer offer Wookie? I don't think you do. I think you leave him be and uh, and walk quietly away backwards. <laughs> Hope he stacks his bike. Yeah, leave some honey and just let it just walk away. Um, oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm looking for. I'm look, particularly looking forward to, to his story because um, the the concept of a wiki Jedi, Jedi in the first place is for me mind blowing. When they've been kind of uh, associated with brute force and. Um, uh, and, and, and rage, and so the idea of a passive um, uh, Wookiee Jedi is fascinating. And, and to your point, Turbo, having a you know having a look around his um, his dwelling and what's going on in his self imposed exile is is really cool. What I like about the fact that we've seen that we've had this, it would have been very easy to have kind of almost killed, should we say, three out of the four off before having some backstory. And for it to be disappointed because the explanation is quite underbel- underwhelming. Mm. But A, the explanation is not underwhelming. We're, we, we've got to know an awful lot of what happened in the past. Not everything. Mm. And then we resurrect the story only halfway through, if you like, the uh, maze, maze objective. So I think it's really it's, it's been really clever, the pacing of this. Yep. They, they yeah. killed two, and then they've sort of unkilled them. Then we, we're getting we're all four are back in. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, we sort of, Catherine, yeah. we talked about that last week of kind of going, oh, we've feel like it's not the end we'll we'll see Carrie Ann Moss back in some we haven't really <laughs> touched on her it's sort of you know, is she the brains of the operation here is she, is she she's, running she's something leader, else yeah. is she you know what what's going on with Carrie Ann Moss um she's sort of I, I was actually thinking about this today as does she recognize now when she gets confronted in the bar and I guess this goes for Torben as well when the, the identity is revealed. Are they seeing May? Or are they she seeing knew, Osha? She, she knew it was May when um but she, she says saw when you. she saw the she thing saw on the her thing. She was ah, you. Right. So she knew. Yeah. So she knew then, but up up until that point she was like No. I think she, she can tell initially it's not. saw Osha, like when she just saw the face, but when she was close enough and saw then the symbol on her forehead, she was like Oh no! It's, it's you, May. Uh, okay. and that's when she basically like really went for the, like the lightsaber, and things the intensity diff became different yeah. in their fight. Then, yeah, because I was kind of going, oh, maybe yeah, do they and, think and it's like- Osha, and they've just actually got, they've wronged her in some other way, <laughs> and that you know, there's actually a whole flip and, where there's another thing. And that's what about. I thought. That's what I thought before I saw this week. So before to, to your point, that's exactly what I thought at the end of episode two um, that Carrie Ann Moss thought it was Osha because of course we found out that she had been one of the Jedi that had asked Sol to get to, to kick her out. Mm. Um, and that's so immediately that's what I thought. And it wasn't until this week when I realized that she had that tattoo um, after the Ascension um, ceremony and that, and that um, Carrie Ann Moss was there that it wasn't until this week that I realised, yeah, she knew exactly who it was in the bar. Mm. I think it's 
kind of deliberate too, because I think in the first two episodes you could see, if you look at it again, Osha's hair or fringe is slightly shorter than May, so May's just covers down yeah. to her eyes. Oh, wow. Yep. And yeah, if you look back to it, that, that kind of makes sense because it's trying to hide the uh, the symbol. Or the, yeah, you yeah. could see Osha's um, <coughs> forehead pretty clearly, especially in, in bits and pieces that it didn't yeah. have the mark, whereas they were trying to hide May's mark quite a bit. Yeah, that's very well fringe, fringe watch. Thought out. It's very <laughs> yeah. well thought out, isn't it? Like it's it's a lot can be said for a writer's room, um, especially. It, it, it just seems like everything's really been thought out and pieced together really intricately and we haven't really had – we've never had this in a Star Wars show where we've kind of, you know, jumped back and forward and, and had little bits revealed to us in little pieces and things. We've done, you know, flashbacks in some things a little bit before but nothing is sort of as intricate as this where it's all slowly kind of building and we don't – and you would think that kind of – it wouldn't necessarily have to because you know when we started this, we're going, oh well, we know we don't know who lives, who dies. The timeline's completely, you know, we, we you could just run it from start to end, and it wouldn't necessarily mean that anything would get ruined because you don't know where everyone's going to end up. But it's actually gone well. We're just going to put mystery on top of mystery on top of mystery here. Um, I know, Mole. What, what's 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 happening next week? Are we um, are you feeling like we'll get a little bit more stuff that like? This this will be next will be the last one that anybody's seen as well, which I think will be interesting because I feel like you'll get a little bit, but I don't think you're going to get. I think all the meat's coming in the back end. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, it will hit the midpoint, but um, yeah, I think I think we'll be heading to Kelnaka. Where, where, where were they? A Joff or something? The the hunt for Kelnaka's on, and uh, it'd be interesting. Interesting to see how that goes. Secrets will be revealed in the hunt for Kelly. I'd like to know why they're giving their kids spice creams. And what's in those What's a spice cream go for these days? Well, I, I first thought it was in the first episode of, of sorry, the first viewing, I thought it was spa- they were saying space cream, you know, we call it space cream. Oh, you think it's spice, spice like this, as in like spice, spice like I'm running spice for the hut spice. Yeah, and, and I looked at the subtitles and they went, no, it's spice cream. So, like, what sort of drugs? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just like how they used to be cocaine in Coca Cola kind of thing? You think it's yeah, that's know. how they're rolling? Uh, yeah. Well, maybe that's why the Jedi turned up. And they're just like, hey, you can't. Can't, can't give this. spice to kids, guys. <laughs> I think. I think the good thing <laughs> is we really have no idea where the show is going, and that's what's you know exciting about it as well. Like normally, you know, you sort of it can be a little bit derivative. You can sort of you know pick where it's going. Hmm. Whereas I, you know, haven't yeah. haven't, haven't got the foggiest. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Like I feel like they could off these other Jedi by the end of the next episode. I feel like Master. I mean, I I just hope Master Soul is just an innocent bystander in this. I really I really like him. I don't want yeah, it to I turn want around to that he's just <laughs> fronting up the whole time. He he does feel like he's sort of genuinely trying to to help here and a little bit surprised that it's all kind of gone down the way it has. So I don't know. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question of you guys? Um, do you, do you think, and I asked this of Sean last week and I, I, I'm, I'm sure it's the case, but I do wonder, do you think that this all leads to the Sith or is it something else? So the guy, the guy, that, the guy that we see that supposedly is her master, which and there's a few theories out there as to who it is. Oh, One that may well be hidden in plain sight, um, maybe something else completely. But the point being is that uh, that that person um, ignites a red lightsaber at the end of episode one. Mm-hmm. Is that person Sith? Do we think? I, th- I by definition, I th- red lightsaber got to be Sith. I think he is, is but it? I think he, he's obviously the apprentice yeah. so right Maisie Acolyte, so, you, you, that, so you believe like the um star wars explained guys that the definition of acolyte is the apprentice to the apprentice yeah it's all like a one yeah, of, like a, wannabe. a follower a follower okay, a wannabe. Yeah. okay. yeah so i don't think we will re- get revealed who the master of that is i think that's a so, season two sorry, kind of thing season two would maybe but yeah um, got it yeah uh yeah yeah, are, are, are they if they're the, are they that involved going back where they are involved in 
Osha and May's conception and they're pulling the strings in the background and there's something at that or they just happen to be some some people who've got force abilities at the Sith tap. I'm not sure. Does it all tie up together in a, in a neat bow? Maybe. Does, you know, does Carrie Ann Moss know more than she's letting on? Does she find a direct link and she's trying to extinguish something that's even more serious so they feel like they can, they can take more extreme measures on things? Maybe. Uh who knows? How, how, this thing? I feel like it's all... how do they cover it all up? <laughs> yeah, how do they cover it all up? Is it worth covering? It, you know, it's maybe it's not the first time. Maybe it's like we've covered up Sith dealings a bunch of times, and some of us have to do it, and it's not pretty. But for the greater good, for the good of the, the order, good. the greater good, we got to we got to clean up these messes sometimes. And if we find some dark, some force witches, you know, working with Sith to make acolytes, um, we're going to bring him in. Come hell or high water. Oh, my name ain't Carrie Ann Moss. <laughs> one, one, one question then, Turbo. In that trailer where all those Jedi reveal their lightsabers, is your is 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 Yord in that in that crew? I I, I, I was actually going to mention that. Um, oh, sorry. So, no, no. I I got this stupid theory, and I I think it came from King Tom on the Sith list, just doing a play with words. And I think he said Dark Yord of the Sith. And I thought, hang on, there's got to be something to that. Um, so that that's my current batshit crazy theory. But um, I was going to do that. I was going to look back at the at the trailer oh, yeah, to but, see if... if do the scrub through. Maybe we could do it now. If, <laughs> if he was in that scene in the trailer with that cave with the, the, the apprentice. I think that's I all was... a trailer misdirect, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. I thought he was yeah. going to ask you when, they, when all those lightsabers lit up, did you notice one that was brown? <laughs> Finally, that's another that's another mystery. I, I, I hope that it get I hope that gets uncovered uh, in this season as well. Um, <laughs> that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. So look, it's it, it wasn't the episode I was expecting when I put it on. I was sort of like, yeah, I'm going to pick up with these guys. I'm going to we're going to hang out with the with the Wookie, and we're going to see uh, all my new favorite friends. But um, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was midi. I thought the lady who played their mother was fantastic. Whew, what a stunning woman she is. Goodness me. Um, Jodie Turner-Smith. Yeah. What a great actor as well. She was she was brilliant. And um, they were all really awesome good. Awesome dreads as well, those dreadlocks. Yeah, and it's impressive. good. And yeah. finally, they that damn representation they threatened to do it was just the, you know, a lady touched another lady's face and, oh, my God, it was the, the biggest thing, the biggest risk Star Wars has ever taken. But... Um, it was great, and I thought it was um, really, really good. I, I can certainly see why some people are a bit kind of didn't like it as much as the other ones. Um, you know, it was weird in places, but I think it really set up some real meat. Yeah, but not for things like not for things like a woman touching another woman's face because they've got an intimate relationship. I mean, no, we do that, live in twenty twenty four. You know, that's fine. Times are changing, guys. Yeah, but I can understand if you have watched the first two episodes, got attached to Soul and Yord and 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 all those characters, yeah. and then you didn't get that because you you wanted to keep that going because you know that mystery it, was yeah. really well set up, and you're kind of going, oh, like what's going to happen? You're going, oh, well, I've got to watch a whole episode of a flashback now, uh, and again. We're on this weekly drip feed. I feel like if it was just a bingeable thing, um, it wouldn't have been an issue. But at the same time, I don't want to binge this thing. I want to, I want to savor it. I want it to. I want to see what happens next. I want to be brought in. Okay, hang on. Matthew is holding up his phone. Yord is there. He's disproving my Yord theory again. Trailer Mister X. Don't <laughs> believe anything you sucks. see in a trailer, <laughs> guys. <laughs> don't come for my yord. <laughs> First, they came for my yord. Put your clothes on, yord. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, we've just we've just hit the hour here. This has been awesome having a full deck. I'm loving this full deck. I hope everybody felt like they they got a turn to speak. I was trying to keep it rotating. I don't have a. I'm not a Raj Dilla Shahi kind of balancing act. Can't quite do what he does. I don't think. But um, um, please come back next week if we can get everybody back next week talking some Wookiees and things, that would be awesome. Um, Catherine, you just released a new episode of That Geek Pod this week. Yes, talking Mad Max saga. Um, so into Furiosa, so a bit of a dive into the Mad Max universe and Furiosa. Go see it in the cinemas, Quickly. please, everyone. Quickly. Go see it. See it two um, times, three times. 
<laughs> How many times are you up to, Turbo? I've only done two. Oh, I, only I, should done go. two. I might go this weekend oh, before I... Sorry, I haven't. I, I might go this weekend before let anyone's expectations. I'm looking for a 4DX session. But yeah, hopefully there's a 4DX session still around. Um, yeah, get there. Andy, just shilling, still dropping, still shilling, still dropping. Yeah. Yeah, we're just um, – it's, it's not particularly scientific. We're just two buddies having a chat and um, trying very hard to string a coherent sentence together. It's, um, it's, it's good fun. Excellent. Uh, Turbo, you've, you know, you, you, twice the last this week you've been out and then the last minute you're back in again. So I'm fully expecting to see you here again next week without any trouble. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> Mate, um, Star Wars spelled out is the home for orphanage podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we still didn't make it to episode 50, did we? <laughs> we still, we'll get there. We'll get, I mean, we're not, we, we, we'll, we'll make it. Trust me. We'll make it. I haven't done. Pepper Pod's been on hiatus for half a year and we'll, we'll, we'll come back one day. One day you'll just look in your inbox and it'll be there. So podcast. Oh, how is Frosty? He's doing well. He's going to, hopefully he'll come on. Come on soon. Get him on here. I'll take a fifth. If I can go sixth. Oh, if we oh yeah, we on. need a Frosty Acolyte review. We might. I think he's actually enjoying it, which uh, there you go. I don't want to speak for him, but I think he was enjoying it. I, I sent him a text on his birthday. But he, he said he was in the wars. He had some surgeries. Yeah, I think he had a bit of work on the schnoz, so, uh, <laughs> which isn't great for podcasting, I don't think. But, um, yeah, this has been great. I would love to have everybody on. Um, thanks, everybody, for who's been listening, downloading. Leave a five-star review. It's been really good. It's got a really good response. People want to listen to Acolyte. Uh, and if you're enjoying the show, you just want to hear us keep going. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll keep going the next couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, we'll let's find out what's going to happen. Let's unravel this sucker. Um, so thank you, guys. Thank you, Josh. Bye. See, bye. Thanks, Josh. See you soon. Bye-bye. Later. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. bye. Thank you.